All right. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. My name is Chris Spangle. Uh, now, if you're listening on the podcast, and all of you should listen on the podcast, you are probably going, what the heck is going on? There's a, another interview with a... So we're, we're talking to the other founding brother of the Liberty Memes Facebook page. Uh, he hit me up and he said, you know, you talked to my brother, but uh, I'm far more interesting, far better looking. <laughs> uh, he didn't say any of that, but it was implied. I know. And uh, I said, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. And so we're going to do a little Facebook Live. So if you're joining us on Facebook Live, welcome. We're excited to have you here. Uh, we are uh, for at least the next week, I would say, bigger than Liberty Memes. So we're going to relish in that and enjoy that. At uh, most, at most the next week. At most, yes. So, uh, so we, we have a good week uh, or so. <laughs> so. It will be a good week. All right. Now let's get to business. Let's let's get serious uh, because memes are serious business. That's right. They're serious business for me. Uh, I haven't introduced you. You are you are Peter, Peter Gay. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels weird to Peter, say your name. My my middle name is Israel. It's Peter Israel Gay. <laughs> your brother used that joke already. Damn. Uh, it's, so it's the good. audio is like ah, oh, but uh, for Facebook it's it's brand new. Uh, feel Listen, free we get to, we get to make last name jokes. We have that uh, we have that prerogative after our upbringing. Uh, feel free to leave some comments on the Facebook uh, chat. I'll go check those out. You can ask uh, ask me anything of 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 Peter Gay here of Liberty Memes. Um, it just seems weird to say your name because for so long you guys didn't actually use your name. So I right. feel like I'm admin one. So you you are admin one, and then the other is admin two or dad dadmen. That grew out of the community group. Yes, we have uh, we have a little cultic following there. That <laughs> they call him their dad. So then I'm Uncle Min, which is nice because I, I play the aloof side. All right. So what happened? What happened? Well, we got zucked. And frankly, I was shocked, shocked that we lasted so long in the first place. <laughs> um, we really did know that that was coming. Um, and I think that we managed to turn this around pretty quick, too, because we did have you know, a backup page waiting in the wings. So we're, we're back to a good 10% of where we were three days ago. Yeah, you guys had how many Facebook likes? We had 580,000. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's bigger than the city of Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> your, your brother was telling me earlier today, because I, I talked to, uh, now what's his name? Who? Dave. Dave. David, yeah. Don. David Edmund, too. And so he, he was telling me that uh, he was saying that you guys have a reach of 40 million people. Um, yeah, he knows that better than me. Uh, I'm not really a statistics guy. But yeah, he watches the, the metrics more than I do. But yeah, it, it is true. I mean, you don't have to have 40 million uh, followers to have 40 million views. I mean, our stuff gets shared around. That's the whole reason that we started the page was because I was making memes on my own profile and then watching them spread around the internet in the libertarian world. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe people want to see memes from me. That's when you, Like when you get that big, do you, how much responsibility do you start to feel, if any? I feel some responsibility to my audience that they want to see content from me. Um, but since this whole thing was established as a way to amuse myself, I don't feel any responsibility for the content. I mean, you know, I try to keep it clean. David doesn't try as hard to keep it clean. Um, but no, I, I, I don't feel that I'm, uh, you know, oh, well, you're responsible for what people think of libertarianism. I, I have made arguments that apparently have been convincing to a lot of people. Um, and that's great, you know, because that's what I care about more. I, I get irritated when people say, you know, brush us off supposedly in our defense and say, this is just a meme page. It's just for entertainment. Don't take it seriously. Like, yeah, we make a lot of jokes, but we do have a purpose, you know, in life. We're trying to promote, you know, personal responsibility and freedom. So where did you, and feel free to speak for your brother, because we didn't really get into ideology too much. We just kind of talked about what happened. Uh, on a podcast that will air uh, tomorrow morning. You can get that in any podcatcher. Where were you guys always libertarians? I mean, when, when did you personally start to develop your philosophy and how? We were conservatives. We were raised as conservative uh, Republican types. I mean, we're 
we're Christians and we've always been pro-life. Um, and it was about 12 or 13 years ago that we started uh, having conversations with a friend of mine who had become a libertarian and um, just kind of learning about the difference between what's right and wrong as opposed to what should be legal or illegal. You know, what's the responsibility of the civil government or of people to each other as opposed to what's what's right or wrong. Just because something's wrong doesn't mean it should be illegal. And, you know, that the really the law really should just have to do with justice. And so at some point early on, I read the law by Bastiat and that cleared a whole lot up for me. Um, and that was right around the time that Ron Paul was uh, considering his first, well, actually his second uh, presidential campaign in, in 2008. So we pretty much uh, got rolling with the <laughs> with the whole crowd that became libertarians around that time. So when did you actually start the page? I started the page uh, in 2013. This would be right in the beginning of the um, Obama's second term. So, um, yeah, that's like I said. I, I was just sharing me. I had a, a meme. I must have been from that second um, Obama election that uh, it was the success kid. He was saying, uh, didn't, didn't vote for the lesser of two evils. Yes, not responsible for evil. And that, that was a very successful meme. So um, somebody said to me, you should start a page. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, um, yeah, it took a long time for us to get uh, originally to get to where we are right now with the, with the second page. So Liberty Memes 2.0 has like over 50,000 likes as of right now. Well, that took us like three years to accomplish on the original page. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And we put the link to the new page. That's why you guys are here is really what the importance of talking to these guys is that we want you to go like the page. I want you to yeah. go like the page if you're in our audience. You're brand new to the podcast. You're only here for the Liberty Meme guys. Go like the page. I, I think it's really important. And I, I wonder if you agree with me. I think it's really important for this page to grow really quick because I think... Facebook needs to understand the power of the libertarian voice and that when they knock somebody down who is arguably the most popular libertarian page, who is mainstream libertarianism, who is just trying to have a good time, who is talking about basic libertarian principles, then in, in a, you know, it's, it's not, you guys weren't conspiratorial. You guys were equal offenders. I mean, you post yes. kind of whatever, but I think it's really important first and foremost for people to go like that new page to send Facebook a message. Yes, we get knocked down, but we get up again. You're never going to keep us down. Right. <laughs> but actually, yeah, I've, I've been thinking because you mentioned that we're, uh, you know, sort of equal opportunity offenders. It's not like our purpose in life is just to offend across the board. But if that happens, then that's fine. Um, I was thinking, you know, we post enough anti-Trump material and, and Facebook never exactly told us why we were unpublished. We could make a claim that it was actually the right fascist who silenced us. Then we'd be on CNN tomorrow and, you know, they'd probably reinstate the page overnight. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would believe that, but. The, the other thing, it's Liberty Memes 2, 2.0, right? Yeah. And right. Uh, Liber Liberty, it's Facebook.com slash Liberty Memes 2. Uh, so you can go like it there. And, you know, d something that I do, I've done with your content forever because like everybody else in the movement, I just rip you off uh, repeatedly. <laughs> uh, you don't have to call it that. Yeah, just see first. So that way you see their stuff, share their stuff, and then you give them more reach to help them grow the page. And I think it's really important to help uh, Peter and David grow this page and also to help support you guys financially through Patreon as well. So that reminds me, um, you had mentioned on your podcast, I wanted to tell you a couple of things that I heard on your podcast because I listen to about me. I'm that narcissistic. Um, <laughs> you had mentioned that what we were doing, you know, sharing from one page to another was just what any social media marketer would do um, to take advantage of the algorithm. That's true, but I wanted to correct that a little bit. We weren't taking advantage of the algorithm. We were actually surviving the algorithm that was already being rigged against us. In fact, views that we have on memes right now on a 50,000 like backup page are about the same as they were on our 500,000 like original page we were getting suppressed before being fully silenced so those methods of you know sharing around are really just ways to cope with that i should just turn the lights off i'm not moving enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah your, your brother corrected me earlier and said that you guys didn't really do much of that because you didn't need to 
And I will add, I've noticed on... We didn't do a lot, that's true. Yeah, and that it is true. I have noticed that um, on another page that I run that is completely unrelated to politics, the video views went from 60,000 to about 4,000. And now they're starting to creep up. But like when they said they were throttling earlier this year, they really were. They really... I saw on every page that I managed a huge dent in page reach. I mean, these guys control who sees us and they're still scared of us enough to right. shut us down all the way. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, another comment that I thought of while I was listening to your, I, I wanted to tell you that I appreciated the way you changed your mind overnight and then came back and said so. I mean, it wasn't on a huge issue of principle, but you were like, I ain't going back to Facebook if they shut me down. The next day you're like, well, actually, maybe I should. <laughs> I don't know if that just means they have a hold on you, or but you got convinced. But I, I like the way you're just like, oh, I changed my mind. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, this is a conversation. This podcast is not me telling people what to think. This is not me telling people this is what libertarianism is. There, like, there's a lot of more qualified people to tell you what to think about libertarianism, like Tom Woods, for instance. Yes. This is kind of an ongoing conversation that I have mostly with myself and the audience. And I have, and I want to get your take on this. I go back and forth because just like I said, they've been bad business partners. And every right. time they tell you what you ought to do, they immediately change that for something else. And it doesn't matter how much money you've spent with them. They just cut your knees out and they don't care. And so why should I do business with people that don't want to do business with me as a libertarian? Why should I stay on this platform? But yeah. then I was talking to people that night and I was uh, thinking about it more. And I it was like, you know what? F that. <laughs> like, I, I, it was really you that, that kind of spurred that thinking because I watched what you two did and I saw the velocity of which that new page grew. And I said, no, you know what we need to do is we need to stay on this platform. I'm, I was wrong yesterday. We need to show them the power of this. And I go back and forth. I mean, do you go back and forth on, on how to handle these? Various I think, yeah, I think we should not have made Facebook our home for this long. We probably, I mean, we, we've seen this coming. We're, we're not idiots. We've seen for well over a year at least that Facebook is going the way of MySpace. Unfortunately, there's not, there's not another uh, place to hang our hats like Facebook was when MySpace declined. Um, I imagine there will be one enough of us exodus out of there. Um, but we, we were, we were setting up for, for moving our home base elsewhere, but I think it is still a good idea for us to keep a presence everywhere that we can share material to, because there's a lot of people, they're not actually, it's funny, but they're not actually NPCs. They're actually people with brains who can be, you know, switched on at least. <laughs> and so it, you never know what's going to appeal to them. I mean, um, trying to remember, trying to remember some of the arguments that appealed to me early on, but you know, I, I, I feel like I can talk to conservatives more than to liberals because I've been where they are. Oh, I remember what it was. It was when, uh, Lou Rockwell's introduction to Ron Paul's book, uh, uh, foreign policy of freedom. And Lou Rockwell said, Conservatives totally understand that the government is inept and corrupt and no good at all when it comes to domestic affairs. But then when it comes to foreign policy, they seem to have the mightiest touch. And I was like, damn, he's right. I cannot call myself a conservative anymore. I'm a libertarian now. And I mean, that can happen. You know, people can get woke. So uh, we need to take advantage of the opportunity to make that happen. What are some success stories in uh, turning people onto libertarianism that you've seen? Well, usually, uh, I don't like, I don't get to see it happen, but I get to hear from people down the road. I do recall somebody, <laughs> actually, it was one of the most offensive memes that we've ever posted. Um, <laughs> it involved flag draped uh, coffins. And somebody said I was going to join the military. And I, I saw that meme and I thought about it. And I was like, F that. I'm not going to be part of it. I was like, wow, good, good. <laughs> Why do you, you, your brother David didn't really have a good answer. He was just kind of like, I have no idea. Why do you think memes really are so effective? Because the social media is uh, as big as it is. That's where people go to chill out. It's like you said, it's kind of like the bar of uh, the 21st century. So I don't know, people are still drinking at bars. It's a waste of money as far as I'm concerned. Buy the booze and drink it at home. But anyway, <laughs> 
um, is because they're not going to be reading books. So they should. We do, you know, read books. Um, and I don't, I don't look around at people. I, I love the XKCD comic that was uh, long before the, the, the NPC meme. It was the same idea. All these people are sitting on a bus looking at each other thinking, oh, shoot, nobody knows how to think for themselves except for me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw but that. I, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so I forget what question I was answering. Um, why do you think they're effective? Yeah, because people don't, don't necessarily read books and because uh, a meme, if it's done right, it can make people think. I mean, it's, it's always been the same thing with comedy, with jokes. You know, if you, you, if you can get a message that tight, you know, a setup and a punchline in as few words as possible, and that's what jokes are all about. That's, you know, that's a way to hit somebody with comedy. And it, it forces them to think about something in a different way than they have before. Whether it makes them change their mind about it or not, it at least starts a conversation. That's why I, I go back and forth about what I want to do. Um, if I want to make a suggestion to David about that billboard that he's trying to put up, because um, he wants it to just say taxation is theft. I'm like, that's not going to change anybody's mind, but it would start conversations because people don't always hear that. I mean, it's gotten more popular in the last couple of years. People have heard that libertarians think taxation is theft, but that's far from a mainstream concept. Uh, Andrew says in the comments, LM turned me, similar meme actually, broke my worship of the military and helped me see foreigners as people. All right. <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, someone asked if Liberty Leems is you guys. I noticed a ton of fakes start popping up. My favorite was totally not Liberty Memes. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Liberty Memes. Well, yeah. Don't Meme on Me did that first. They had a definitely not Don't Meme on Me. I don't know if you've heard of those guys, uh, but there's a lot of great stuff out there. The thing is, uh, I don't mind. I mean, that's great. I wouldn't call them. I mean, they're not us but they're still pretty awesome. So that's fine. As many people as there are out there spreading libertarianism and spreading memes um, is great. I think the best will continue to have the most success and that would be us. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Liberty Memes 2.0 is where we are, uh, where we're setting up for now. My, my view of that was uh, kind of going back to that. We're going to have a home base off of Facebook. Um, I believe it'll be libertymemes.com, which is not fully operational at this time, but it will be. And then we can share back to Facebook, you know, and, and elsewhere. We kind of got started on Instagram that dropped off because I was the only one doing it. And I get lazy with stuff like that. It's not urgent, which it is becoming. Um, had a drug dealer named Instagram back in the 90s. Just kidding. That's cool. Yeah, I would, I would humbly suggest email. Email is like key. Um, Andy says the thing that turned me if it were the ple if it pleases the crowd memes or what turned oh, yeah. uh run Rolando asks can you ask why so many people have theorized that they deleted their own page <laughs> because it's a hilarious joke to accuse liberty memes of committing the proverbial inside job right. okay we make the inside job jokes so of course when we get Zuck oh liberty memes ban was an inside job that's funny Anybody who actually believes it is out of their minds. I mean, even for conspiracy theorists, they have some theory of, you know, cui bono kind of a thing. Right. We lost 93% of our viewers overnight. Judging, like, how does that possibly benefit us? That makes no right. sense. Right. <laughs> the only reason they're talking to us right now is... <laughs> yeah. I accidentally offended you. Um, it was not my intention. You know, the reason this is the We Are Libertarians podcast page is I added podcasts because people didn't know what we were. They just thought we were just some dumb meme page. Yeah, yeah. And not a podcast. And so, and then you're like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, just some dumb meme page, huh? Yeah. I said, no, you don't understand what it's like living in your shadow. Like, at this point, you guys are the- I know what it's like to live in a shadow. Yeah, and you were, you were telling me the early days weren't that great. I was telling you people have this impression of us libertarian slacktivists that we're all gamers living in our mother's basement. But I'm a different kind of libertarian. I have, you know, a job. I have a wife and kids in my basement. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I, I sincerely apologize. I didn't mean to uh, besmirch your work because I, I, listen, I steal a lot of it. No, that's, the, and the thing is, it, this goes back to the memes as a medium. It is a political cartoon of the 21st century. It's not like we're writing treatises. And so, yeah, we should be taken with a grain of salt, especially when it's freaking obvious that we're joking. But at the same time, 
there are there are economists and uh, you know modern libertarian philosophers who will say I can write a whole book and freaking nobody reads it. So you know, on the other hand, if I can condense their idea down into meme form, then I'm spreading that. You know, and I think I've got enough of a foot in both worlds to do that effectively. Yeah, we're talking to Peter Gay of Liberty Memes 2.0. Go like the page. Mark C first. Join their Patreon. I talked to uh, I talked to Dadman. So somebody asked, "Where's Where's Dadman?" You can uh, listen to my interview with him on the podcast feed tomorrow. His cat died. Oh, really? Today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, rough fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough one for all of us, man. Yeah. So David, David, you, I can tell, like, I'll, I'll tell you, like David and Peter seem like two very, very nice guys. When I met them in person, they were very humble. Like I would, if I had a page with 500,000 likes, I'd be a monster. Uh, but so these guys are, these are guys are good stewards of everything that you're giving them. Um, but yeah, go, you can, you can hear my interview with David uh, tomorrow morning on the, on the podcast feed. And uh, so, I mean, what what do you you see the future as having a presence offsite as well as kind of rebuilding the stuff yeah. i mean is is you guys but, you guys have a tremendous amount of juice i mean do you guys want to do anything other than just kind of what you're doing having fun like do you have any other aspirations like you know running for office or national chair or writing books or anything any of that kind of stuff well i'm not running for office ever so <laughs> <laughs> you can be sure of that. Um, as for what our aspirations are, I think we haven't had a we haven't had a meeting about that or anything. If we do the the whiskey will be flowing, but um, no, Dave and I haven't really discussed that, and I think our answers would be pretty different because um, I, I I like to create the content, I like to make memes, I like to you know chat about liberty and philosophize about it whenever I can. Um, but I, I don't know about I don't know about anything bigger than that. And David is much more of a he's always been more of a promoter. And um, I mean that's good. It's it's been absolutely necessary to get us where we are now and to get us wherever we're going. But he's he's kind of the big dreamer as far as that stuff goes. And I'm more of a like, hey, well, whoever's listening, here's what I have to say. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like you are kind of the the philosophical backbone, and he's the marketer. You two make a good team. Yeah, well, I mean, I did major in philosophy in college, although I don't remember a thing about it for the most part. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I, was, I, I have, I, I don't know how much more time we have, so I wanted to address a couple of things because I wrote them down. Yeah, please, uh, absolutely, go for it. Well, well, now this may not be widely known, but we were, um, uh, there was another page, who's a name I don't probably need to mention. Because I'm more than happy to. I hate Liberty Hangout. Go ahead. Well, a certain page that sounds an awful lot like the name you just mentioned accused us of posting material like encouraging people to murder cops and stuff like that. Just so you know, I mean, we're pro-life, anti-war, pro-non-aggression principle libertarians, and we would never like post anything of that nature just to clear that. And it, But here's the thing. That accusation was made in the context of saying, well, I, I'm not worried that they would ever do that to us uh, because Liberty Means was doing some shady stuff like this and that. And, and that really shows more, I think, than what the speaker was intending because that is, that is exactly the mindset that Facebook is um, encouraging. That's the strategy of censorship that progresses from first they came for the, you know, the Russian bots and then they came for the, the, the nut job conspiracy theorists and then they came for people who they just disagree with politically. And there's already sort of ingrained this presupposition. Well, if you get censored, you must have been saying something off the wall or you must be illegitimate in one way or another because that, the, that can never happen to me. And that, that polarizes people. The people who are still there are saying, well, liberty is not under attack because I'm still here, you know. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's as my co-host Harry pointed out, first they came for the hackers, then they came with the sex, for the sex workers with Sofa and Fosta, then they came for the conspiracy theorist and Alex Jones, and now they're coming for mainstream libertarians, then they're going to go after mainstream conservatives. But as, as your brother pointed out, like they're not really going to go after Fox News. They're not going to go after mainstream conservative thought because they're, they're going to go after the people who kind of 
don't toe the line, aren't going to the Atlantic Council or Council on Foreign Relations events or watching CNN. They're going to go after us, the independent media, the people who have ideas that talk about ideas that are that seem fringy, you know. And so the, that group in particular is definitely in danger. And everybody who is an in independent media, that's why it's important to support independent media in any way you possibly can, even if it's just a share, because. Yeah. We're the first ones, like, now that Alex Jones, people, that, that precedent has been set, that they're censoring political thought, it's, it's all downhill from there, you know. I'll tell you one thing that looks uh, a lot different in the political landscape now than it did, you know, even five or ten years ago. We used to say, um, it's not the left versus the right, it's the state versus you. Well, that has become much more transparent because it used to be when a Democrat was in power, the Republicans would talk kind of libertarian and they'd be kind of anti-establishment and vice versa. When a Republican was in power, it was the Democrats who were talking libertarian game and, and, and the libertarians would sort of form a loose alliance with whoever was protesting the people in power. And now it's really not like that. We've got so many libertarians who are sticking with Trump um, and, and the liberals are, they're just as establishment, you know, out of power as they would be in power. So it really comes down to the, like you said, the independent media, we're the ones that are outside of that, you know, it's, it's them versus us. It's not really a question of, it's not really a question of Democrats and Republicans because they're really both on the same side. Yeah. Uh, so continue on. I want you to, in case we lose battery power on the iPad, cause I stupidly didn't charge it. We're recording this on zoom and I'll, I'll post the video of this on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if we automatically disappear on the Facebook Live, you can go. Uh, we'll finish up the conversation on yeah. Zoom. And I'll post it. But we'll just make up a bunch of crazy conspiracy theories about what really happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and, and you mentioned something. Somebody in our group was like, "Well, they were sharing anti-trans memes," and it is funny how people kind of pick out the one thing that you may you may have posted sixty thousand memes, thirty thousand memes, but it's like people hear that one thing and they go, "Well, here's the reason that I can just sort of." lay down well it's property rights it's you know no, no, i don't think you would disagree with property rights i certainly don't right. disagree with property rights but at the end of the day we're fighting for our ability to have a voice in the public square and you're either siding with libertarians like liberty memes and we are libertarians or you're siding with communists who want yeah. to silence people like that's the choice well and to me it's i mean I don't know, or fascist it's all the same to me like I, I i warn people against sliding into the left or to the right um, but like, I just found out, I guess, uh, uh, uncle Sam's misguided children got the Zuck treatment, uh, oh, recently really? as well. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't celebrate that. That was another accusation that we were, for some reason, people made a big deal about this. They're like, well, you guys mocked Alex Jones when he got Zuck. I'm like, first of all, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> and secondly, we never said that it was appropriate for his platform to be taken away. And, you know, we spoke out about that and we, we knew it was coming for us. And when it happened to us, we made jokes about ourselves as well. <laughs> right. We just got people to take ourselves seriously enough like that to be like, well, this is a massive injustice. Like, yeah, it's screwed up. But I mean, honestly, I've never paid a cent to Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. I, mean, I understand the concept of doing business with him, but I never invested any of my money in it. A lot of time. Yeah. But, you know, that's. I just, I just figure as long as I have a platform, I'll keep talking until they shut me up. Well, there's this, well this, this ignorant person who loves attention, uh, <laughs> who, who is just attention seeking and is just everything that's wrong with politics. And you can tell her I said that. Um, that's I don't talk to her, so I can't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't waste my time. Right. But the, the, point is liberty memes shares memes they're not out here pontificating and you know doing what i'm doing you know they're not writing articles like that website is doing you can do a little yeah but it, like your your goal is different your goal is to make people laugh it's not necessarily yeah. to to you know stand up you make fun like if alex jones gets uh the, if he gets zucked there's there were so many good memes about that like why wouldn't you share that well and here's the thing if you're not having fun ron paul told david this years ago when you're spreading the message of liberty if you're not having fun you're doing it wrong right. and he took a huge swig from a bottle of Hennessy <laughs> so what are what are some other things that you want to get out there man I don't know I, I already read through my lists you know I just wanted to make sure that uh, I, I let you know that you know I appreciate I really appreciate 
the way that people have uh, come together to let it, I, I've heard people say, you know, they're going to, they're going <laughs> to, they're going to roll up their sleeves and fly the black flag. If Liberty means ever gets his oxygen, like, okay, we're not going to war. Um, and we're, we're, we're stable or whatever. But um, no, I, I appreciate people getting together and saying, you know, where, where are you guys? Where can we rebuild? And I, I do want people to, to know where we're going, that we're on Liberty News 2.0 and Liberty News.com and, that we're not uh, we're not just gonna get depressed and be like, oh, we got shut up, so we can't do anything now. Like, I'm 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 here for you, you know, Liberty Movement, because I can help people have fun with with libertarianism. While and and that's part of the thing, like the state and the statists, they take themselves so seriously. That's why the left can't meme because they take everything so seriously. This is the most important election of our life. Let's make a joke about it. That doesn't work. Like you have to, you have to make a mockery of the state. The things that the state takes so seriously, like the stupid flag, <laughs> like make a joke about that because when you look at it, it's absurd and therefore hilarious. And so, if I can be part of encouraging people, you know, when when and it's inherently funny, you know, when a guy in a uniform is like barking orders. And I mean, I learned this from freaking Spike Jones in World War Two. We piled right into Fuhrer's face like you laugh at that kind of authoritarianism that's that's the best thing you can do well that's part of Alinsky's tactics and that's part of what Obama did so effectively which is <laughs> turned, and that's why the MP, NPC thing I think drives them so crazy is that it's using tactics that they used against small government libertarian you know individual minded people yeah uh, well we have there's a meme I'm sorry to interrupt you but there's a there's a meme about that too you know like uh Stop dehumanizing us, you Russian bots. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you, we suffered through eight years of, well, if you hate healthcare, you want old people to die and you're just a fool. <laughs> and Obama mocking. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I've, I've told the story on the podcast before. In 2003, I went to CPAC because I was a neocon Republican like yourself back then. And I just remember people talking, you know, we need our own organizations and our own mobile army, just like the left has. And you know, it's sort of been created and part of it is terrible and part of it is beautiful because now you have these two factions where it's like, oh, we're living in hell as human beings, but as people who love to laugh and just kind of have that joker mentality of burn it all down, it is funny to see the two of them go at each other. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it is the, like the NPC thing, I think just drives them so crazy because it's a taste of their own medicine of dehumanizing yeah and, uh, and mocking and, them but again it, it is a meme I, I i don't encourage seeing people as non-human you know that right. everybody even even commies have the right to their stupid opinions and to express their stupid opinions because as you pointed out it's the only way they're ever going to get refuted right so uh l let's let's stop there you've been uh very generous with your time uh you guys have done a great bit of charity i want to mention that and thank you for that someone in the chat pointed that out let's give her credit ashley says liberty memes raises tons of money for charitable causes it's not just memes uh, your brother talked a lot about that in the interview that aired before this on the podcast so if yeah. you're new to, new to us a lot of new audience tonight we have a podcast tomorrow morning in your download that you'll hear the interview with both brothers and he went into detail a lot of detail a lot of stuff I didn't know, and I think it's really cool that you guys have uh, taken that that time to give back in that way and use your massive presence to give back to charity. So thank you for doing that. And, yeah, you uh, kind of have to. Show people that the government isn't the only way to help people out. Right. So, all right, shameless self-promotion time. How can people help you guys out, and where can they like the new page? The new page is Liberty Memes 2.0, um, and we will also be at libertymemes.com in the near future. And that's all the shameless self-promotion I've got. I just have a question for you. When an IRS agent gets a tax refund, does it go into his paycheck or out of it? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> all right. Thank you, for, thank you for joining me, Peter Gay. Uh, Liberty Memes 2.0, go like it, mark it first. And uh, everybody that joined us tonight, please go like it yourself. Share it on your Facebook. Spread the word. Share this uh, if you would be so kind. Uh, that helps us out and helps them out. Uh, and yeah. I just appreciate everything you guys have done and thanks for supplying the dank memes for the Liberty Movement. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good one.